Well, hello and welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us for service today. I'm Jim Wehrer, Senior Pastor at the Church of Grace and Peace, and I believe it's not by accident that you're joining us today. And I also believe that God has great things in store for you in the days to come. And everything you need to take your next steps with the Lord is right here. You'll see on this page, we have a place for you to request prayer. There's a built-in Bible. There's notes where you can follow along with the message. And there's a tab for next steps that will lay out for you all the next step opportunities that you're invited to take on that day. Finally, there's a connect card that we invite you to fill out to tell us a little bit more about yourself whenever you're ready to do so. And hey, by the way, we have a free gift to give you to thank you for doing that. Well, hey, we are so excited that you're here. We want you to feel right at home and know that we are looking forward to coming alongside you as you pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, good evening. Uh, hallelujah. 
I want to welcome you to our midweek service, um, worship in the word this evening. Just want to invite you to stand with us and uh, let's just worship the Lord. Just still our hearts before him this evening, put aside everything else that's happened, whatever else has happened during the day, and let's just uh, focus on the Lord this evening, the Lord Jesus, and worship him. It's never been anyone like you, God. It's never been anyone like you, God. No one above you, no one beside you. There's never been anyone like you, God. Yes, amen. There's never been anyone like you, God. There's never been anyone like you, God. You are the highest. You are the greatest. There's never been anyone like you, God. Yeshua, Jehovah, hallelujah, glory in the highest. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. God for us, God with us, King Jesus, Lord Almighty. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. We praise your name. We praise your name forevermore. We praise your name forevermore. All tongues and all nations, let all generations sing praise to the name of the Lord our God. Yeshua, Yeshua, Jehovah, hallelujah, glory in the highest. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. God for us, God with us, King Jesus, Lord Almighty. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. Sing praises to the great I am. Sing praise to the great I am. We join all heaven singing. Worthy is the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. We praise to the great I am. We join all heaven singing. Worthy is the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Sing praise to the great I am. We join all heaven singing. Worthy is the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Sing praise to the great I am. We join all heaven singing. Worthy is the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Yeshua. Jehovah, hallelujah, glory in the highest. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. God for us, God with us, King Jesus, Lord Almighty. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. Yeshua, Yeshua, Jehovah. Hallelujah, glory in the highest. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. God is for us, who can be against us? King Jesus, Lord Almighty. Yahweh, your name is holy, holy, holy. Yes, your name is holy. 
Your name is holy, holy, holy. Your name is holy, holy, holy. Yes, God. Your name is holy, Lord. There's never been anyone like you, God. Pour out 
out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we sing help me. There you are. Let's do it. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved. That's it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Once more. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me white thank you jesus you have saved my life you brought me from the darkness into glorious light you brought me from the darkness into glorious light. You brought me from the darkness to glorious Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Oh, glory to your name, glory to his name. There to my heart 
was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Let's sing it together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of yes. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fountain i know nothing but the blood of jesus what can wash away my sin What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. How oh, precious. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me, that makes me white as snow. No other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Yes, hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you for the blood, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are whiter than snow, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Uh, our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Our, our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Our, our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts 
the door Jesus we love you Jesus we love you oh how we love you Lord how we love you you are the one ah. Our hearts adore, we adore you, Lord, Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you, you are the one. Our hearts adore, our hearts adore you, our hearts adore you, our hearts adore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, Lord, the, the author and the perfecter, the author and the finisher of our faith, God. For the joy set before you, God, endured the cross. For the joy set before you, you endured the cross. It is finished. We thank you that the work of redemption is finished in our lives, God. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Just have your way in this service this evening, God. Let your word go forth with power and might. We just pray for this Easter season, God, that you would be lifted up, that many would see you, God, that salvation would come, Lord, to many. We give you thanks for all you're doing, Lord. We thank you for all you've done in our lives. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Midweek Service at the Church of Grace and Peace. We are so glad you're here. So that we can serve you better and get to know you, we would like you to fill out a Connect card. Once you fill that out, feel free to drop it in the offering or hand it to an usher as you leave. For both in-person and online guests, you can always text the word CONNECT to 732-375-1563 to fill out a digital version of the card. If you are new or fairly new to our church family, on that card, please select first or second time guest. When you do that, we have a special welcome gift just for you. Come say hello down front after service and one of our leaders will make sure you get that gift. And for our online guests, your gift is available on our Next Steps page at graceandpeace.org. Did you know we offer family-friendly options? 
For nursing mothers, we have a private room for mothers to nurse their babies. We also have a family room for all family members to bring their children if they need a separate space. The service is streamed to both of these rooms so you will not miss the service. In just a minute, our pastor will be praying over the tithes and offerings. You can give at any time by texting the word GIVE to 732-375-1563. If you are giving in person today and need an offering envelope, raise your hand and an usher will bring you one. After each service, prayer teams are ready to pray down front with you. We would love to pray with you. For prayer requests at any time, just text the word PRAYER to 732-375-1563. For more Next Step opportunities, event information, or to learn more about us, please visit graceandpeace.org. Once again, welcome to the Church of Grace and Peace. Hello and welcome, our Wednesday night crowd, our faithful Wednesday people. Good to see you. Hello to our online guests tonight. Well, I want to share a few important announcements, some things that are going on. So now is not the time to check out. Pay close attention because this is important. Uh, we would like you all to join us this Friday, Good Friday, praise God, March 29th, right here, 7 p.m. in the sanctuary for a brief time of worship. And then we're going to view a special video presentation about the final days of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. And then we're going to receive communion together. It's going to be a beautiful night just uh, meditating on the passion and letting God prepare our hearts for Resurrection Sunday. So please come to that. Also, if uh, you are sensitive to things like images of the crucifixion or things like that, small kids probably don't want in the room at the time or if that's something that's a little too... Um, sensitive to you just be aware it's only a part of that presentation but um you should maybe excuse yourself for that all right so next thing up this is exciting too eagles ascending is a prophetic round table uh, for those interested in sharing prophetic insight as well as it's also a mentoring group for those who have prophetic gifting so a couple things going on there and this class begins monday april 1st someone's anniversary i know mm -hmm. how many years 57, Mom and Dad Gilbert. Hey, go back. I didn't read the rest of that. Sorry. <laughs> go back to that, uh, that announcement. Can you? There we go. Uh, sorry, I got distracted by April 1st. At 6.30 p p.m., it's a Zoom call, so you can sign up for that at graceandpeace.org. Okay, it's now my privilege and honor to receive an offering for the Lord. Yeah. Got some rowdy, generous givers out there tonight, don't we, Pastor Jim? <laughs> I want you to know tonight that faith is a key ingredient to biblical generosity. It, it's essential. It's so essential. Did you know the highest givers in the U.S., the highest givers per capita in the U.S. earn less than 10000 a year? That's probably no one in this room. Where are all the wealthy tithers? Where are all the wealthy givers? I think that says something about the power of money and how it can gradually take over us the more and more that we have. It can gradually take over the throne of our hearts. And so think about this. Maybe when we don't have the, as much the necessity to live and give by faith uh, stays strong at the heart of giving. When we don't have as much then the, necess the necessity to give by faith becomes the primary motive for giving. Why do you think Paul said uh, that the Macedonian churches had an abundance of joy that overflowed in the wealth of their liberality? These were desperately poor people who still gave generously to the needs of the church. And here's why. Because they gave, Paul says, beyond their ability. How about that? Does it take faith to give beyond your ability? And so in doing so, they demonstrated for us a couple key aspects about biblical generosity. Let's hear these tonight and really take them to heart. Number one, it's never legislated, but voluntary. I can't sit up here and make you give. It has to be from your heart. And when it's from your heart, just like America, we are free to do as we choose, praise God. Did you know that the capitalistic democracy is, a, is an extension of the heart of Jesus and the gospel? That's why we are a blessed nation, tangent there. But it gives us ownership and accountability. Give or don't give. It's up to you. 
And so then we seek our hearts as to what to give. Number two, biblical generosity is lavish. It must be something that costs us dearly. It can't be something that I barely miss that. For the price of a cup of coffee a day. Oh, really? Are you really missing that, you know? Come on now. And number three, it is accompanied by joy. Paul says that word there means hilarity. When was the last time you gave and just laughed your keister off? This is great. <laughs> I love it. Praise God, I get to give. That's what our heart should be. Not, oh man, again, another offering, I don't know. Got bills to pay. No, a, a hilarious heart. Are you still with me tonight? Come on. Don't look at me like that. Number four, it emanates out of love for the Lord. And then if you love the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to love his people, and you're going to give, and you're going to give to the church. So let's just ask ourselves, like, how are we doing on the things that I mentioned tonight? There's always room for improvement. There's always room for growth. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for teaching us about generous giving. And Lord, help us to step up because we're so blessed. We have so much. Uh, we're so abundant that we would be those that would just be sacrificially givers, leading the way uh, out of our heart and, and experiencing the fullness of joy that you have placed in the act of worship as we give. So we thank you for that. Lord, I ask you to invite those that are still... Uh, not stepping across that line. Lord, help them to grow in the grace of giving. And I declare that the Church of Grace and Peace has a 100% tithe base, that we have 100% generous givers, that there is nothing that is impossible in the heart and mind of God for us to do to expand the kingdom because we are blessed to be a blessing. And I thank you for it, and we receive these gifts with thanksgiving tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praise God. One more quick thing. I, I let Karen know I want, the Holy Spirit just really prompted my heart to speak to something tonight. Um, and I know this bears witness with Pastor Jim because it's his heart. You might not know this, and sometimes I, we say things as a, from a pastoral heart publicly, even though it's like not on a Sunday and the whole crowd isn't there because it needs to be spoken out into the atmosphere and it needs to be shared, and of course, you can maybe go back and watch this. But we're winning tonight. The vision of grace and peace is winning tonight, and here's why. Because we're building the people that shape the world. And did you know that God put offices in the church, namely Pastor Jim, the pastors, to do what? To equip the saints. To do what? the work of the ministry. And so I want to publicly celebrate and just point out some things. You rarely see me leading worship on a Wednesday night because it is our heart to make avenue for gifts, to release gifts, and to allow growth in the gifts. You know, none of us are perfect, we're growing, but when you, when you release gifts to grow, you sow the seed for more. When you hold on and say, no, we're not going to do that. So first of all, Dave, I love you, man. Thank you. He, he is one of several worship leaders who leads you into the presence of God. And thank God he, his personality isn't mine. It's different. He has a different gift. And Jim and Cynthia, thank you for stepping in and leading. And Andrea and Doug just... And every now and then, JL, she's not here, she'll step in. And so this is a picture of the body of Christ doing ministry. And I want to thank Cammie for serving tonight. And she is, she's a gift. See, we need to publicly affirm and celebrate. You know what? That encourages others to come and step up. And Miss April, well, since you, one year... Coming to this church, the most humble, faithful, loving servant just said, how can I serve Jesus? And I watch God touch and transform your heart on a weekly basis. And she's learning to run sound. 
among many other things that she does, and she helps lead worship. So thank you for that. And so, and you're about to uh, hear from Karen. You're no stranger to her ministry. She has the opportunity to teach here on a Wednesday night. And if you notice the same thing, Pastor Jim and the pastoral staff are releasing leaders who have gifts to share, to speak, to teach. And you know what we do? We celebrate the gift. And so I want us to do something. I feel like before I invite her up to teach tonight, I know she has a, a wonderful word from the Lord to speak to us. I want us to agree in prayer. And I didn't mention all the wonderful volunteers who make this entire church work, but these are, you understand point of contact, you understand that there's, there's things that can symbolize a spiritual truth. Now, how many of you, I know the answer to this, want to see grace and peace thrive the next generation and generations to come? And so, can we just pray for a minute? Can we just, I love the I love the anointing that Dave left here, and it kind of dissipates a little once we get into business and announcements, but let's just go back to that place with that precious presence of the Lord, and I just want to pray real quick, and can we just agree and call in the next and the next and the next uh, gifts and abilities and personalities that God wants to use to do the work of ministry here at the Church of Grace and Peace? Can we do that? Can I have every heart just uh, pulling on heaven and faith? I, I wouldn't do this. I, I'm not doing this to make you look at me or think anything or even these people. That It's a spiritual principle. I really believe the Lord said do this tonight, so I'm being obedient. Sometimes it even feels awkward, but I just say, okay, Lord, I know you said to do that, so we're going to do that, and we're going to trust you with the results. So, Father, we thank you. First of all, I thank you for the, for the vision you had for this church from the very beginning when you put it in the heart of Pastor Walt and Maureen and all the things that you have cultivated since then. And we just say no to the plan of the enemy. For with a, vi with a vision like this, a heavenly declared vision for this territory, surely the enemy would come to attack and tear down. And thank you, Lord, for preserving us. Thank you, Lord, for not only that, for sustaining us, for upholding us, and for strengthening, strengthening us, and for shoring up a foundation that this ministry will go on until Jesus comes. And tonight, Holy Spirit, you have highlighted the people that you are using and given opportunity to share uh, co-labor in ministry and to release the gifts and callings in this church for this region, Lord. For, for every single person that I mentioned, first of all, thank you for their heart, Lord. I thank you for pure-hearted, unagenda people of God who just love you, who want to serve you, who don't have, have a sour word to say about anybody, but just want to be used by you. you. You exalt those people into the place they belong, Lord. I pray, Lord, you begin to speak by Holy Spirit to the people who need to say, here I am. Teach me, train me, I'm available. Lord, we call in the next generation, Lord. We thank you for the founders. We thank you for the senior saints. We thank you for for all the generations that have come before. But we, Lord, we know that revival is going to come through the next generation. And so whatever that looks like, God, far be it from us to hinder in any way. Help us to continue to step out of the way, to release in humility those gifts, Lord. So we call them in, children's uh, ministry workers, ushers and greeters and, and food pantry workers and clothing, clothing room uh, servants and parking lot attendants, God, and, and people to do hospital visitation, Lord, and people to fill the, the, the greeters uh, position and the welcome room, God, for worship team members, instrumentalists and singers that have a heart for you, God, and willing to grow anointed uh, in their capacity to just bring the presence of God into this room. Lord, we thank you for them and even for the next um, 
a level of leadership at this church. Lord, help us to discover and, tr and train up leaders to do the work of the ministry, Lord. Every area possible, count biblical counseling, Lord, uh, teachers, anointed teachers of the word, every, everything that you have for us, God. We just, we just make a demand on that call from heaven and say, uh, we're looking for those, and we are expectant to see that happen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to steward this vision. We thank you for Pastor Jim's leadership. Thank you. We pray for him right now that you just continue to to cover him, to surround him with favor as like a shield that the fiery darts of the enemy would be would be thwarted back from his life and his his family. God, we, we pray that he has margin in his life just, just to hear from heaven, to soak in the presence of God and continue to lead and guide and shape in the direction that we should go. And we thank you for every person that's stepped up and called alongside to help him our our deacons our board of trustees all all the all the pastors every every person god that works together to build the people that shape the world we thank you lord for it and i just put a stake in the ground right now and i say well we're we're serving you uh notice devil you can't have this church you can't have this vision and we're moving forward, and we're going to see it, it come to pass as your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Lord, would you just grant us uh, a full sanctuary? Pastor Jim said it just the other day. These seats are for souls to come into the kingdom. And what a sad thing to see them empty. But your heart, God to fill this place with people. God, you can trust us with your people. We're asking you to trust us with your people, Lord, in this time. So we thank you for it. I thank you that you're anointing Karen to bring the word of God tonight, to teach us more about being um, vessels of blessing. And so speak through her, anoint her, give her grace, give her peace as she delivers the word. And we, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you receive Karen as she comes to minister the word? Well, hey, everybody. Always such a blessing to be here. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this church. And I say amen to that prayer, you know, and it, it ties into the message tonight as well, which is how God always does things. So, well, we already prayed, but I just want to give God glory. So let me just pray real quick. Well, Father, we just praise you. You are the one we're here for. We are so thankful we're your children. We're so thankful that you purchased us with your blood. And we thank you that you have anointed each one of us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you have marked us by your Holy Spirit. You have sealed us with your Holy Spirit as a guarantee. So I thank you tonight for all that you have for us tonight, God, and we just give you all honor and glory and praise. It's yours alone. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, so, okay, so we'll jump right into things. This is our part three of what we've been going along with about us being vessels of blessings. And it's because we have the one within us that wants to bless everywhere we go. And if we looked at the basis for this whole thing, it's that God wants to express himself through us in every avenue of life. It's, it's as if God is taking our feet into the marketplace, into the workplace, into our families, into every place, and he wants to express himself through us, which is, I say, the, the basis of this whole uh, teaching is. Just to go over a few of the scriptures that we have, uh, the, the most important one, I believe, is this Psalm 103.1, um, where we say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything that is within me, bless his holy name. And that is really the basis for our life story. Um, and the couple scriptures we've been using that are so important and why God calls us vessels, if we look at 2 Corinthians 4.7, our, our basis of our scripture, that we have this treasure 
in earthen vessels, that the excellence of power may be of God and not us. So we are all carriers. We are all a vessel of the Holy Spirit. And he deposited his spirit in with each and every one of us the second we are born again. And that second we were imparted these Holy Spirit gifts. So Romans 5, 5, 2 is now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit when, within us is such a spirit of excellence and power, but it's all from his love. It's all from his love, and what comes from his love is his grace and is his mercy and his kindness and all the fruit of the Spirit, all the gifts of the Spirit. So when he deposited his Holy Spirit in us, he deposited everything we need for life and godliness, everything. And he told us that in Genesis 12, 2, the whole purpose of God's children from Genesis all the way through Old Testament and New Testament is that we are going to be a great nation and that we are to be a blessing. We are to be a blessing, which is an expression of God within us. Uh, so just to get caught up a little bit, um, also to say too, you know, <clears throat> as we grow in Christ, I know when I was first a Christian, you're like a sponge. You want to understand God. You want to understand the Word of God. You want to understand the kingdom, and you're like a sponge. You just want to get everything you can, understanding who He is, who we are as a Christian. We become a sponge. But as we grow in Christ, God wants us to now wring out the sponge and be the living water into other people's lives. Whatever we have, we have to give to someone else. Even if we're born again a short amount of time, what we know can teach someone that doesn't know anything about God. When you're born again, we are filled with all of God's spirit, which changes our character, changes our physical countenance, changes everything because we're new creations in Christ Jesus. But one of the, the great scriptures I've been using every week is this uh, 2 Peter 2, 9 and 10. This could be a whole lesson for just tonight because it is so, so powerful that we are a chosen generation. Oh my goodness, God has us here for such a time as this. And it's, it's a wild time out there, but wow, God has given us his excellence of spirit to live from and live by and live through. All the things we come against, no surprise to God, he's given us his Holy Spirit power to overcome the things of this world. So God desires uh, for us to be this blessing, but it's not the world's flattery. Um, we are to be a blessing because it's the Holy Spirit in us, expressing through us. The world's flattery uh, always wants something in return. It's really, their words might be nice, but they're really about how, what they can get out of it. We as Christians are the exact opposite. What did God place in us that we can bless someone else with? with his unmerited favor, uh, which is unmerited. So when we see someone that's not too kind, we give them unmerited favor, like we have had unmerited favor, which shows grace has changed our lives, and we don't express our response to the stuff in the world like the world does. We purpose to live by the power of the Holy Spirit within us. So we are a chosen generation, and because we are royal priesthood, we are kingdom sons and daughters. We wear crowns. We wear royal robes of righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. We are his, the sons and, and we're, we're the sons and daughters of the Most High God, the King of Glory. So we embrace the understanding, not so much even who we are in Christ, but who He is that is within us. Oh my goodness. So we are a royal priesthood and we are the holy nation of God, His own special people. Uh, so it's, it's just a, a great scripture, but we'll just see, we're moving along on time here. So um, let's see. So tonight I want to focus on, on how God can use each of us as a blessing in all our uniquenesses and life stories. No one can fill our, sho our shoes. Every life matters to God and what um, we get to accomplish on earth is for his glory. So every life matters to God. All we have to do is look at the cross to realize the value of how much we are worth our Father. 
that he would send his son to the cross for us and die and rise again. That is the place of our value, what he paid for each and every one of us to come into um, the kingdom of God and be his child forever shows the vast value that he has for us. But each one of us has a unique part in God's big picture and that he wants us to accomplish on earth. You know, I love the scripture that says God's children are um, a city on a hill. So when you think about a city, every different place of employment there is, there are so many different parts of a city from the mayor to the, to the banker to the whatever. Everyone has a part to make the city work. And that's how it is in the kingdom of God. Everybody has a unique calling that only you can fulfill to complete what God has a big plan, but each one of us is part of it. So what gives us the true joy in our life is that our lives matter to God and that our lives have purposes in God to live and thrive and not just exist. The world uh, doesn't understand the power of the Holy Spirit that we have that gives us joy and has us thrive for the Lord's purposes. Uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians 2 verses 14 through 15. This is a glorious uh, scripture too. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and uses and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are being perished, that those are perishing. So we have an influence in the countenance of Christ that we carry. We might not realize it, but there, we are so different from the world because of who we carry. And when we are filled with the, um, the Spirit of God, we have what the world so needs, and it's Christ within us. Christ within us is the gospel within us, the good news of Jesus Christ. And this broken world is looking for what they haven't found yet, and that's Christ, the hope of glory. Uh, so... Um, uh, Rick Warren, uh, you might have received a handout when you came in. Uh, Rick Warren notes how God uses five ways that we make each one of us totally unique for living out God's purposes. The amazing thing is about how God made each one of us unique right down to our fingerprints. We are one of a kind, God's workmanship, and the unique shape each one of us can fill, no one else can fill. You know, I know the evil one, he always wants to see, uh, try to get us to copy someone else. Because you know what? If we're trying to copy someone else, we are going to miss the purposes that God has for each one of us uniquely that no one else can fill because we are called to a purpose that only each one of us individually can fulfill. And we are our best when we are all about God and all about how he made us to be. Copying someone else is way too much work. As you can see, that's not God's will. It's too much work. We are who Christ called us to be. And these five ways in this um, shape, it's like an acrostic, is so useful um, because God uses every part of our life for his glory. Uh, the, the acrostic is the word shape. And the first letter stands for spiritual gifts, like Pastor James was talking about. They are, they are imparted us the second we are born again. We are discovering to find out what are those gifts within us. Those spiritual gifts are so vital to how we walk on purpose without, um, without it, it takes uh, some of the gray away out of our life when we discover our spiritual gifts. I want to advise everybody, go on our church website and under the search board bar, just put spiritual gifts. Pastor Ralph has great videos. He has great teachings. There's handouts. Understanding how God wired you in your spiritual gifting affects so much how you walk out your life. You know, and a lot of times um, we can trial and error, practice thing. I think this is how I'm wired. I try this, and if it works, it's a great fit. If not, you try again, you know. But the spiritual gifting is, is so vital, and every single person that is born again has spiritual gifts. Every single one has gifts. They can be gift mixes, um, and you'll just go, there's 
we're not doing a lesson on that tonight, but there's three places in the Bible that talk about our spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4, and it talks about the giftings because everybody gets motivated by God within us. And he lights your fire within you when you know your spiritual giftings and understand how you are to move. It is really, it gives you, it'll give you such um, clarity about how God shaped you. So spiritual gifts everyone has. Um, so that's one of the ways God shapes us and uses us. Another one is how our heart is. If you're hand out, you'll see we have a heart that has desires and hopes and passions. Each one of us is so unique in what God puts in us as a passion and how we walk that out. Everyone is so unique, and each one of these passions, these heart's desires, give you an excitement about life. They give you a, a focus on how you can serve and all the abilities and gifts you have can be used that give you such joy in your heart. Like I know some women in our church have such a gift with sewing and all that. So they make things for the um, food pantry, for the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes, for the um, hospitals and, and nursing homes. What a beautiful blessing because they're just using their heart passion to bless someone else. The same thing too with all, all our abilities. It's amazing what we can do when we do it for the glory of God. I know someone that was, oh, I don't think I really have any gifts, so they started working in the food pantry and started breaking down cardboard. They were so excited because it wasn't the cardboard they were breaking down. They were serving God. And that was a gift of service in them. They didn't know what it was, but it's a gift of service. So it's like, wow, why am I so excited cutting, folding cardboard because I'm doing it for the glory of God. It just is so exciting. So we have spiritual gifts. We all have different hearts. We have different abilities. We all have different personalities, our characters, our characteristics are all so unique. So each one of these has are so unique and let, and then you mix them up within each and every person. I can't do what you can do and you can't do what I can do. And all around this room, everyone is such a unique vessel. But to me, these show you like, what's your passion? What, what gives you joy to do? What do you feel like blesses God? What, what, what do you think just, um, well, uh, just be a blessing to someone else because we're vessels of blessings and it's all about how we bless God and bless others that we are these vessels of blessing and it gives you such great joy uh, to, to so I would say if you have these sheets take time with the Lord and pray and look for the spiritual gifts test find out wow I, I didn't know I had such a purpose but every person has a vast amount of gifts within them because God created us to be a vessel of blessing and everyone is unique everyone's important every life matters for the kingdom of God with God's kingdom if everybody does their part God's big picture gets accomplished and it takes one part at a time and every person oh my gosh I pray God shows you what your fire is what you can be lit up with because he's got he dwells in us this is this excellence of, of power that is within us you know and he's just so amazing that he uses everything together for good you know and that's why I still love that picture of a city on a hill everybody just moving with their passions with their abilities with their hearts desires with their giftings it's a God, kingdom of God is exciting it really really is exciting so uh, the last one talks about, too, about our life experiences. Oh, my goodness, so much happens in our life experiences, especially as we get older. We just keep accumulating more experiences, whether they're good, bad, and di different or whatever. But as I, I get the expression that with age comes wisdom because you learn what's good and what's not good, you know, and what works and doesn't work. And through all these life experiences, we have so much to give others because we filter them through the Holy Spirit and say, I know what I did that wasn't right because the Holy Spirit said that wasn't right. So when we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we're growing all the time. You know, we are growing all the time. So um, our life experiences are, are just so vital, even, even if they're not so good. I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well, too. But Ephesians 2, verses uh, 8 through 10 says, this is all of us for by grace we have been saved through faith and that's not of yourself it is a gift of god and it is not of works lest anyone should boast for we all are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works 
which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it's, we have, um, we have good works God wants to use uh, and, and create through us as we are a vessel of blessing. Uh, so, so we'll uh, look at these life experiences tonight. Um, some of the toughest and the hardest life stories I have heard, God has turned them and round and used them for the biggest life-giving ministries there can be. They're around the world. I even think of Johnny uh, Erickson Tata. You know, she's a paraplegic, and um, she has been an ex extreme blessing of the disabled and wheelchairs around the world. Everything that came against her, she turned around her life and has been a blessing, a world-renowned speaker. God, what we think is just, you know, we in the natural, that would be so uh, discouraging, but look what God does with a life that is sold out for Jesus Christ, you know, and that's what she, she did. Uh, so also, too, last week we talked about God's perfect order for our life. That's loving God, loving others, and loving self. You know, when we get our order backwards and we're about ourselves, we are not going to live our blessed life. We are not because it's the power of the Holy Spirit in us that leads us with the best life to live for his praise and glory. Because when he's first, we are all about the Lord and what he wants to do. And it's not, we're, we're last, and it actually is the best life there is. I don't know if you heard about the um, acronym for joy. It's Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I'll tell you, it's joy. It is absolute joy to say, I am serving the Lord today. I'm going to go bless someone today because fires up the Holy Spirit within you because he's the one that wants to bless through us to all the people that are around us. So we end up, um, we end up reaping the joy by being a vessel of blessing because we will reap what we sow. If we want to love God and love others and love ourselves in that order, we are going to be filled up with joy because we're serving the living God and we get to bless others in his name. So we reap joy by being a blessing because God's way always works. He says, be a blessing. He is a blessing. So we can be a blessing from his grace and his mercy. Uh, so, so let's see. Um, Moving along here, I'm short on time. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so we know Christ in us does not change, but our lives change all the time. So we've come down to the foundations of Christ within us. Uh, Colossians 1, 27b says, Christ is in you the hope of glory. Hope is empowering. It is absolutely an empowering place to live from because it's the Holy Spirit within us is the hope of glory. Living from the hope of glory is how God wants us to see life. He wants to see, wants us to see life through the eyes of hope. Around our world, it is not hopeful. In Christ, oh, we have a living hope. This is, we have a living hope that's eternal. We have hope eternal. And we can look at uh, Romans 5.5. 5. It says, now hope does not disappoint. <laughs> My goodness, hope will never disappoint. It will never disappoint because God is in us. The hope of glory never disappoints because the love of God has been poured out in us. So life stuff uh, can disappoint us, but Christ will never disappoint us. Um, there are countless um, really hard stories in this church. I know so many of your life stories, and your stories are amazing because I see how you still sing the praises of God, which is a testimony of God walking with us each and every day. But so, so many of these tough things we can go through end up being such ministries of hope. I even think of like a Ralph and Donna Ferry that um, had a divorce. They do divorce care because they went through it and want to share the hope that they've had through that ministry. People like, uh, oh, our, um, I'm trying to think of the, the Keswick ministry that they have for those that have been through drug addiction that are delivered now do life-giving ministry in that area. So whatever has been in our life, 
the good, the bad, the ugly, God can turn around for good. He can use us as a minister of hope to say, look what God did in my life. Look what I went through. The evil one wants us to look at our life and how all the horrible things and how bad life is and how good is your God. I'm like, are you kidding me? I looked at the cross. I said, my God is really good. Whatever comes upon my life, I want to live for the praises of his glory. Um, so, so hard times we experience, we want to say, God, you're with me, you're for me, you never left me. And all these ups and downs in life, we, we have God's redemption story. We have his redemption story that is eternal. So uh, um, let's see. Here's a, a scripture, and I thought it was pretty neat that that Dave um, Rock had, had mentioned this. I'm like, oh, he were, this is what's so cool about God and the Holy Spirit in this church. It seems like week to week to week, everything ties in together because the Holy Spirit's moving and aligning and everything and scriptures and everything, even Pastor James talking about giftings. I'm like, oh, I wish we had more time. The gifts are so important. And so this scripture uh, Dave was talking about in Hebrews 12, uh, 2. It says, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, here's holy, righteous perfection of Jesus dying on the cross. He despised the shame because it wasn't his, it was ours. But our shame died on the cross, so we don't bear the shame anymore. And like he says, it's a joy. Amen. You know, but he went, he went for us out of his love. And like Dave was saying, we were the joy set before him that he endured the cross. I especially think about this this weekend with Good Friday and, and Resurrection Sunday. So... So we all began talking about the author in here. Everyone begins writing their own life story independent of God before we met Christ. But when each trust in Christ, the Lord steps in as the author and the finisher of our faith. Our lives of faith are finished in Christ. He has written the end of the story, and the end of the story is unbelievable. Oh, I didn't get to my display. I'll interrupt this. I go back to us being vessels of blessings. <clears throat> so what I put out here is a number of different mugs, and that just represents us as a vessel. But each one of them are totally different, and that's each one of us totally different and unique, but we're a vessel. And God, Holy Spirit, same Spirit in all of us, is the Holy Spirit that he poured out into us to be a blessing, a, a vessel of blessing for him. And it's all Christ in each one of us being expressed differently and uniquely in each one of us. And that's what I find so amazing about God is that he uses every one of us in every way from every experience, all for the praises of his glory, all to be a blessing. From whatever we came from, we want it to be a blessing to someone else. So he's the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't know if anybody knows about this uh, song by Matthew West. He has a great song. <clears throat> he's, my story, your glory. I'm just going to read some of the lyrics. We don't have time for the song, but just listen to these and see if this uh, resonates to your own. It's a great song to look up. It says, the story of me was a story of shame. Wrong turns written on every page. So many parts that were so messed up, but I love the part where you showed up. Rewriting my past, rewriting my hurt, line by line and word by word. And now my story is living proof that there's a chapter that you can't use. My story, your glory. My pain, your purpose. My mess, your message. In all things, I know you're working. One life, one mission. One reason why I'm living. All for you, not for me. My story, your glory. Well now, the story of me is a story of grace. Fingerprints of mercy on every page. No more ashamed of the path I took. You set me free to be an open book. If even my scars are a part of your plan, take all of my heart, Lord, here I am. My, own, uh, my only cause till you call me home 
is knowing you more and making you known. Like all of us, isn't, isn't that glorious? So that's all of us, you know? The minute, minute we stop writing our own stories, the minute Christ came in and he took the pen. He is the author and he's the finisher of our faith. So like Paul in the Bible was Saul. We know what his life was about before um, he became Paul. Oh my goodness, what God does with a life. Uh, so when Paul says, and we know what Paul went through, he was a Christian murderer. He just wanted to destroy the church of Jesus Christ until God came in and made him a new creation. Well, look, at, he wrote most of the New Testament. Let's look at Philippians 3, verses 12 through 13. Uh, Paul says, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold on that which is Christ Jesus has also laid hold of for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to appreh have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You know, this is what you think about Paul. He's a murderer. What did he have to leave behind? What did he have to forget so he could pursue the things of God? He had to put vast amounts of sin behind him. But you know what? He did because he believed the cross was the finished work. He believed his sin was done. He believed he was paid for in full. He believed he had no more sin debt anymore. He believed he was free to serve the living God. And that's what God is saying to each and every one of us. Our past, yeah, when it comes up, I, I agree with Pastor James, we got to get pray for things that come up that have no place on us. We pray for them and set them free and say, I am going for God with my life. You know, I've got to do what Paul did. Can you imagine if you're a murderer and you say, I've just got to forget my life? That's hard to forget. But he believed God's grace was enough. He believed God's mercy was enough. He believed the blood on the cross was enough to redeem him to be sin free so we could focus on serving almighty God and that's what we do we have to put the stuff that wants to take up our day in our past so we can serve the living God and be these vessels of blessings that he wants us to be you know uh, none of us have it all together but Christ in us does this is what is so amazing when we get a hold of the finished work of the cross we get a hold of Christ within us the hope of glory we trust in the living God who's this um, that were vessels of this excellent power of the Holy Spirit within us and we focus on him oh my goodness with all our gifts talents and abilities with all our life stories with all our dreams with all our hopes with all the spiritual gifts that are within us oh my goodness it makes us thrive for the Lord's glory and not just exist you know God has such passion for us he wants his passion in us coming out to others to be an expression of him in the big and little of life all our stories everything can be for his glory uh, like I say um, Christ in us makes us complete we are complete in Christ because he's washed all our sins away filled us with the Holy Spirit and yes we still deal with our soul realm here um, which uh, which makes us think we're not complete that's why we have a pursuit of God we meet with God all the time look what he says in Colossians 2 9 through 11 for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We had to tell one another we're complete. We are complete in Christ Jesus. We are not perfect, but he has made us complete and he's made us complete to serve him on earth as we depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and empower us, fill us with his passion to serve the living God and be a vessel of blessing to others that are around us. So, um, so our daily lives as we bless others and and we live for Christ and his through his redeeming love and his grace in us this all really reveals that we are we are walking with God you know all of us have the best way to meet with God and to practice his presence and all we picture us that we are literally walking with God what is that like? You know, Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together unless they're agreed? When we agree with the Holy Spirit, 
We're going to do things imperfectly, but we're going to have a passion. We're going to have a power. We're going to have a vitality in us that is going to be contagious, and it will change people's lives around us. Like our story, God's glory. We can minister to every single thing where God has helped us get through the good, the bad, the ugly. We can say, but God, he did this, but God helped me this. This scripture over here taught me that. We can help one another um, live from the, from the greatness of his spirit within us. Uh, I love some of these beautiful scriptures in Isaiah 43, 1. It says, but, um, but now says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you I have called you by name, and you are mine. This is God speaking to each one of our hearts as if we're the only one on earth. I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. You are mine, says the Lord. You are mine forever. This is like the Lord's passion for every person. You are mine. And Isaiah 43, 10 says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, and before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. We are his. We are his purchased property. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been ransomed from the evil one, and we belong to God forever. So, yeah. No greater meaning. So um, can there be any greater meaning in life than we get to walk with God? That we get to have him lead us, this treasure that we carry within our earthen vessels, that the excellence of power may be of God and not of us? Oh, that God has got mighty works for his church because he's within us, his workmanship. He says, you are mine. You are mine. Praise the Lord Jesus so our lives testify to the grace of God, testify. Our lives are speaking continually as we testify. I love the expression that God's children are trophies of his grace. He is proud of us. God, Father God is so proud of us. He has so much faith in us. Oh, he loves his children so much. So when we go through hard times, God is with us. When we go through the trials and the hurts and experience, he is for us. He will never leave us or forsake us. You know how God made that so clear? We can think we just did something wrong. Well, God will leave me, and it's so bad he'll forsake me. That's a lie because he will never leave us, and he will never forsake us. We are his. We, we are his children. So uh, 1 Peter 4, verses 10 through 11. Now each one of us has received a gift. First is Christ, the Holy Spirit, our gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. This manifold grace is the many folds, the multifaceted grace because it comes through such multifaceted vessels that we all are with all our passions and our dreams and our personalities and our spiritual gifts and our life experiences. He works out through his children his manifold multifaceted grace. And it's just going, it's going to come out as an expression of who Christ is us and it's going to be a blessing to someone else. God's spirit in us desires to bless other people. So that's an expression of Christ in us, the hope of glory. So then he says in verse 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. What that means is, what would God want to say to my friend? I'll speak that. What does God want me to say to that cashier? Oh, I'll speak that. It doesn't, it, yeah, it's, it's God's heart in us wanting to speak to others. He wants our voice to be his voice. What does God want to say to our friends and our family and people we meet? What does he want to say? It'll come from the passion of God's value of them. That's what God sees. Uh, he sees the value of every person. And when we see the value of other people that we encounter, we are going to want to speak what God says to them. We're going to want to minister some of the manifold grace that we have had in our hearts 
that we want to share with other ones. When we let God be preeminent in our life, we want to tell someone else their value. We want to tell them God loves them. We want to tell them the gospel that God died for them and rose again for them, and he wants them in his kingdom forever, just like he spoke to us. This manifold grace is the, the levels of uh, unmerited favor that uh, give us the greatest joy when we're, when we're speaking from the heart of God in grace and mercy and love and kindness, we have joy because it's all the Spirit of God coming through us in all the ways we can shape our words. It's very unique how we speak, but it's the heart of God going to be coming through us as we're, we're really a vessel of his heart to someone else is really what we are. We're carrying God's heart because Christ came into our heart and he made our heart his home. So we're speaking from the place of his heart to someone else's heart. And we remember before being a vessel of blessing, we're enlarging someone else's heart with faith and grace and hope and mercy and the fruit of the spirit. We want people to walk away from our words and actions saying, wow, I feel better. I don't even know why, because the grace of God we get the grace of God on our tongue. We get the grace of God in our touch. We get the grace of God in our service. People all know it's not just me. That's something special going on there. I always say, oh, that's I'm just testifying to how great my God's grace is. And he wants you to have the same grace that I have. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that we have this treasure in earthen vessels in that scripture text, it actually is talking about the gospel that we have within all of us, which is the grace of God. So then he says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as an oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it in the ability which God supplies. That's all from the Holy Spirit, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs all the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. All the glory is his. All the glory is always his. We want to just be an expression of what gives him glory, that is for his glory, to his glory. That's what our lives are to be about. Uh, so um, some close, uh, closing thoughts that I have here quickly too, uh, just to give us our perspective of, to me, life just seems so short and we have such a short time to give God glory before we meet him that our life it is so meaningful and so valuable to God and how he wants to live with us living as this vessel of blessing. We can live with such purpose that it gives us joy, meaning, and passion in our life. We, we, we are not mere men, as the Bible says. We are children of the living God, filled with the living God, overflowing with his spirit to impart to people all around us. It could be the smallest gesture that could change someone's life. We have no idea. You know, God um, made us all unique. So that's the cool thing about God. We're not look. God sees our everyday life as being of highest value, not the huge moments in life, because they're really very few. We do life pretty routinely, very normally, but our normal life, our uh, normal life can be an extraordinary life when we're walking by the grace and the Holy Spirit. It can be extraordinary in the mundane things of life because we're doing them for the glory of God by the Holy Spirit within us that wants to be expressed wherever we go. So we have such a, um, such a life passion from God's heart within each one of us. It is, it's, um, it's an extraordinary privilege that we get to be children of God. We get to promote his kingdom. We get to sing his praises. We get to walk with God our whole life before we meet him face to face. So these couple of things I just wanted to end with are just, just to align us, because um, the world's always pulling us, always wants to pull us away, and we can't allow that to happen. 1 Timothy 6, 7 says, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. So we can see from this verse, our lives are not to be focused on temporary things, for they cannot give us meaning and purpose that only the Lord can give our lives that matters for eternity. We have no idea until we get to heaven, even small gestures, we have no idea how meaningful they are to God because 
He cares about every soul. When we care about another soul, we're kind to another soul, we're imparting grace to another soul, God's watching and he loves it. When we love the people that he made in his image, whether they're born again or need to be born again, we are an expression of him to this world. We are his voice, we are his countenance, we are his hands, we are his feet. We are what God uses to change the world. Like Pastor James was talking about, we are people that are to change the world because Christ wants the world all to come into his kingdom. He wants none to perish, no, not one. So we are to the praise of his glory just because we are his children, just because, not apart from anything we ever do, he loves us just as we are apart from any works. But we get the privilege of serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with the life that we have, not someone else's life, the life he gave each one of us uniquely that we can serve him right where we are for his glory. Uh, so, <clears throat> let's see, oh, I love it. So um, when we get to serve him we're li our lives, to be a blessing to other, our good father has indescribable rewards for us in heaven. Remember, the author came in and rewrote our story. So the end of the chapter is already finished and it's for his glory as we get to step into glory one day. But look at this while we're here on earth. Uh, Second uh, Corinthians four verses 17 through 18 says, all, all the tribulations we have, our father told us we're going to have tribulations on earth. No surprise. We should not be surprised by this broken world. We will have tribulations. But look what God says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Our faith walk is a faith walk while we're on earth. Our faith will one day be sight for all eternity. <clears throat> so when we stand before the throne of God, we stand fully loved, fully accepted, fully redeemed by the blood of the lamb, which is how we stand today. All our sins wiped away, our sin debt is paid in full at the cross because of God's extraordinary, overwhelming love. So uh, Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. So we walk with God by faith in the spirit one day at a time with his grace and his mercy covering us the entire time. But the pure in heart, God has made our hearts already pure. We don't strive for a pure heart. We want to keep a clean heart before the Lord the best we can. This side of heaven, our eyes are on the Lord and we do the best we can, but we are imperfect this side of heaven. <clears throat> but remember, he made our heart pure, just like Dave was talking about the blood of Jesus has taken away our sins. Our hearts are in an eternal standing of being pure before God because Christ made our hearts pure. We will see the face of God because Christ redeemed us unto himself forever, and that never, ever changes. <clears throat> so Colossians 3, verses 23 through 24. And whatever you do, here's a great encouraging um, uh, scripture, and we aim at these scriptures. We don't do any of them perfectly, but we have the power of God to direct us and help us. What seems impossible with God is possible. So we aim at this, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of your inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. <clears throat> So we have an inheritance, oh my goodness. We, there, there's probably no books to even Im imagine how many um, uh, the rewards that we have as our inheritance. Oh, only our imaginations, it's just too good to describe. But let's look at 1 Peter 1, verses three through five, we'll end with this. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us as our born again uh, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead <clears throat> for an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. We have this all for us. It's reserved by God in heaven. 
<clears throat> who um, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We are kept by the power of God. Our salvation is kept. It is a done deal. We don't lose that. So we have the freedom to run and live for the glory and passion of Christ. His grace covers us. His mercy covers us. His blood covers us. We, our sin has been paid for in full. We are free to run this race, run this for the glory of God with all our thoughts and our words and deed. We are free. We are free to run for Christ because he set us free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. So we focus on the power of the Holy Spirit within us, and we, we want to maintain that. We want to fan the flame of God that's within us, you know, by the word of God and worship and focusing on him and being about his business just keeps you fired up. You know, when we get slack with the things of God, we actually lose our passion. We lose our compassion, which is the love of God for the lost. So our stories, we can have gone through some really hard times, but those hard times can give us the softness of God's compassion to help someone else that deals with things that we've struggled with. So we thank God for his passion, for his compassion, that we have this life to live as a vessel of blessing because we're vessels of the Holy Spirit to impart the grace to God, of God to others. So, <clears throat> so... Uh, I'll just I'll close out with a, a prayer real quick for all of us. <clears throat> well, Father, we just thank you, God, that you call us to be a blessing with our lives, God, that can be laid out before you and, and, and given to you as an offering, Lord God. You tell us to lay our lives down for you because you have laid your life down for us and purchased us as your children for all eternity, Lord God, and you've given us one life one life to give you glory and to give you praise and give you honor. So, Father, we ask tonight, Lord God, we ask for more of your power. We ask for more of your fire. We ask for more of your compassion. We ask for more of your grace and more of your mercy to fill us to overflowing, Lord God, that we can flow into other people's lives with living water that you have flooded us with. You have flooded us with eternal, everlasting, unending life with you for all eternity in heaven, Lord God. Help us just be a fountain of the gospel to all those we encounter, Lord God, as we have a life testimony that testifies to who you are in our lives. You have made us new creations, Lord God. Empower us to move and be about your business. Help us to flood into those dark places, Lord God, where hope is missing because we are hope carriers, the hope of glory, the hope of Christ within us, hope of eternal life in heaven. Oh, Father, we just pray, God, you'd use this church, use every person here, every age, every stage, every calling, every gift, talent, and ability, Lord God. May we be empowered to make this community a community for Christ Jesus, where you rule and where you reign and where blessings abound because you are on your throne. So, Father, start with revival in us, Lord. Start by sitting on our throne of our heart where we just give you such honor and just celebrate your goodness in our lives that people want what we have, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for a blessing this church is. I thank you for all the vessels of blessings that are in this church. This church family is oozing with blessings, God, and I thank you for each and every person. I thank you, God, you stir up every gift, every talent, every ability, every personality, every shape that they have, Lord God. Stir them with passion for you, God, first and foremost for you and passion and how they can express you in this world and the circles of influence you have put us all in. We are influencers for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to live our lives out for your glory in this life, God. I thank you. And I praise you for this weekend too, God. I pray you would call in from the north, the south, the east, and the west and fill these seats with people that need to know you, God. Let this be. It's Resurrection Sunday, God, but I pray it is Redemption Sunday for those that don't know you, God. We just pray redemption over this church, God. We know the walls are salvation and the gates are praise. And God, give, give this church a, a new home for people that don't have a home. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for who you are in our lives, God, and we give you all honor and glory and praise. It's yours alone. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go, God. Go, God.
Well, hey, we want to thank you so much for joining us. And we'd like to give an opportunity for you to respond to Christ here today. Maybe you've never invited him to be Lord and Savior of your life. Maybe at some point in your life, you said yes to Jesus, but you need to come home. You've been distanced from him and you need to rededicate your life. The Bible says that if we confess him with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we'll be saved. And so whether you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time or you're saying, I've been far and I'm coming home, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. The Word of God says that God's not a respecter of persons, that this is a free gift. We don't earn our way or do works to find our way into God's good favor, that He loves us and we become saved by faith, by believing in Jesus and by crowning Him Lord of our lives. So if you'd like to do that here today, I'd love the privilege of praying with you. I'd like to invite you to just pray the simple prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I do believe that you're the Son of God, that you died on the cross, and that you rose from the dead for my sin and the sin of the world. Forgive my sin. Wash it away. Come into my heart. And be Lord and Savior of my life. And, sometimes that and by your grace, you help me to walk with, with you else every day of my life. God, I thank you for hearing me. I thank you for cleansing me and forgiving me. I thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer, we are rejoicing with you. And we would love to follow up with you. The information is on your screen where you can text and we'll follow up with some information. We'll follow up with some opportunity uh, to get some devotional materials that'll help you move forward with the Lord and even an opportunity for you to connect with one of our pastors if you'd like. So we thank you for doing that and know that we're praying for you and we're so rejoicing in what God has done in your life today. Amen.